Hello everyone and welcome back. During the previous session, we observed the different derivation procedures involving the context-free grammars. In this session, we will discuss about the ambiguity in the CFGs. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of this session, today, we will acquire the understanding of ambiguity in context-free grammars with the help of an illustration. Now, if you all remember, in the previous session, with the help of this grammar, we wanted to derive this string of terminals. We also observed that, using the leftmost, rightmost and parse tree derivation, we finally achieved our intended string. Let's now observe if there is any other way to derive the same string using these procedures. Let's begin with the leftmost derivation method. Now the last time from the start symbol e, we derived e plus e using the rule e can be written as e plus e. This time, let's use the next rule, that is, e can be written as e into e. So from e, we derive the sentential form e into e. Now, this is leftmost derivation procedure, so we will be concerned about the leftmost variable, which in this case is this one. Now, observe the string. We have acquired the multiplication operator, and now we need the addition operator, right? So, this time we will use this production, that is, e can be written as e plus e. So, expanding the leftmost e, our derivation becomes e plus e into e and now we have achieved the format. From all these, this is the leftmost non-terminal and now we will simply derive id from this because the format is already achieved. Now, from these two, this is the leftmost one, so we will derive id again. Now, we are left with only one e. Let's expand this one. So, we now have derived the string id plus id into id. Well, this is the intended string. So, observe, although we started off with different production rules, by the end, we ended up achieving the same result. So, there are more than one leftmost derivations for this particular string. Let's now observe whether that's also the case for rightmost derivation. So, here also we will start off with the second rule, so e derives e into e. Now, remember, this one is the rightmost derivation and from these two, this is the rightmost one. If we notice the string, after the multiplication operator, we have id. So, expanding this e, we will derive the sentential form e into id. Now, there is only one non-terminal. So, let's expand that. Notice that we have covered the last portion and we are yet to derive this portion. So, from this e, using the first rule, we will derive the sentential form e plus e into id. Now, there are two e's and among them, this is the rightmost one. Since we have achieved the format already, using the third rule, that is e can be rewritten as id, we will derive the sentential form e plus id into id. So, we are almost there. Now, all we have to do is expand the only e. So, finally, we will derive id plus id into id. And this is the intended string. So, similar to the leftmost derivation, there are more than one rightmost derivations for the same string. Let's see if that's also the case for the parse tree derivation. So, we will start off with the start symbol e. Now, unlike the last one, this time, let's derive e into e from this. Now, from this e, we will derive e plus e. And finally, from all these e's, we will derive id's. So, if we traverse the tree, top to bottom and left to right, the yield would be id plus id into id. So, yes, there are more than one parse tree for the same string. Now, remember this, for any grammar, if we obtain either more than one leftmost derivations or more than one rightmost derivations or more than one parse tree, 
then the grammar is clearly ambiguous. If it had been unambiguous, the derivation should have been unique and one and only. Due to ambiguity, all the parsers except operator precedence parser will get confused and will produce wrong outcomes. We will observe that in upcoming sessions. Now, ambiguity is actually an undecidable problem. If you want more insight about it, you can refer to the post correspondence problem, which has been beautifully explained in our theory of computation course. So, the question remains how to fathom whether a grammar is ambiguous? Well, there is no concrete approach to that. However, we will learn to solve this in the next couple of sessions. Anyway, do always remember that. For any grammar, if there remains more than one leftmost derivations or more than one rightmost derivations or more than one parse tree, then the grammar is ambiguous. So, in this session, we understood the concept of ambiguity in context free grammars. Alright, people, that will be all for this session. In the next couple of sessions, we will observe some interesting solved problems. So, I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.